Hi there, I'm Steve Knutson from Microsoft MVP for Office Services and Apps. In this demo, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a custom news digest from your news feed, so on my internet here, uh, to your email box uh, using Power Automate. So what I'm starting off with is a SharePoint site, and in that SharePoint site I've just got a news library, so that's my site pages library, which has got a bunch of items in here. And what I'm actually going to generate is a timer based uh, digest, so maybe you could run this daily, run it weekly. The digest is going to look something like this, so uh, using an HTML formatted email, um, in this case here I've just got a table, and when I click one of the links here it takes me to the related news article. We'll just let that news article open up, and then you'll see that, so from the email I can do that kind of thing. So to start this process, I went on a wee bit of a journey. I started with Power Automate and I created myself a flow. Uh, and I did that from the new flow options here. So when I go to create uh, and then choose a new flow, I've used a scheduled flow. And from the scheduled flow, I've entered in the name of the flow, specified the start time, the time of the day that I want it to run. And then I've changed this here to run on um, a daily uh, basis. So once a day at 10 a.m. in this case. <clears throat> There's a few steps in this flow, so I've got one here that I've created earlier and I'll step you through how it's built. So the first thing I have to do is I need to go and get some files. So I'm using the get file properties action, I'm finding my SharePoint site and then I'm looking for the site pages library. Now we trick here is that you need to enter a custom value and type site space pages in, you can't select it from the drop down list. You can optionally include an OData connector um, filter on here to filter it and say bring in the most recent um, items. I haven't in this case, but I'll post into my blog on how to do that. Uh, then I'm using a few compose actions. The first compose action here is going to create an HTML, HTML table. Um, I'm using the values from my get properties item, and then what it's going to do is generate a table. And in the table, I'm going to grab the heading. Uh, the title, sorry, so my label is title, author and link, and then I use the values from each of the items that I collect in my get files action here. So the first column will have the title, the second co column will have the display name of the person that created the item, and then I'm doing a little tricky bit here where I'm cre creating a hyperlink. So what I'm doing is I'm using two concatenate commands and a link command. So if I look at the first concatenate, you'll see that in here I've got a concat and I'm just entering in a href and then the start of my hyperlink. The link part is just the link value, so that's the actual um, link to item value from the dynamic content. And then I've got an item down here, my third one, which is the closing out of the HTML. And I'm, I'm doing that basically with a concat again and then just entering in the closing speech marks brackets and then click here, which will be the hyperlink um, value in the, in the email. Once I've done that, I'm going to then go down here and I'm going to do a um, I'm going to do a compose. And in my compose this time, I'm going to do some searching and replacing. So what I'm doing here is taking my HTML table and I'm going to search out and replace various parts of the item. And again, I'll post the code that we need in here onto my blog. So you don't so you don't have to copy it from the video. I'm, you better paste it from my website and I'll post the link in the comment below. Again, I do the same thing, and this time I'm trimming out the other end of the of the output. So I'm taking the output from the first one and putting that into my second uh, my second compose, uh, and then I'm repeating that process again the third time. So I replace the last parts of it. You'll see I've got a different compose again, and I'm just replacing out some characters down here. And then once that's completed, I've created a final compose. And in this compose command, I'm just storing in some CSS. Now I stole the CSS from the internet, so I'll post the link to the blog this came from as well, which is just handy for uh, your formatting. Um, you can of course customize that. And then the last part here I've got is I'm creating my email message, and in here I'm just going to create my email. Um, I'm using the output. The first one is the CSS, and the second one is the final output from here, from this Compose 4. Once I've done that, um, I save the workflow. And now because it's a um, scheduled workflow, I can only test that by going to my test option here, click manual, and then if I just go save and test, it's going to send, uh, start that workflow, and um, it'll run the workflow in the background and send my, an email to my mailbox. 
uh, and then the email that comes through looks just like this one here that I've prepared earlier. So you'll see it's got my header text which was above the table, the table that I've generated with the compose commands with the title of the item, who the author is, and a link to the uh, to the particular um, document. Now I haven't got any O data filtering on here so it's bringing back all items but what I could do is I could restrict this, I could use a date view or I could use an O data query to find say items modified in the last seven days. Um, and that's the demo. So I'll post some details into my blog, um, hope this has been useful um, um, and um, I'll post another video uh, soon showing a few more tricks around this type of thing.